Shine. <laughs> no, not that crazy. Take a look at this. 30 degrees. It is cold in here. Today, we are talking cold stabilization. Come on, follow me. This is how I stay warm. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Chris Uzani. This is our senior winemaker. So everyone wants to know, there's a rumor out on the street that there's a connection between a winemaker's personality and how cold it is. Is, ah, is there any yeah. truth to that? No, I'm not sure if there's any truth to that, but I, I'll say this. If one more person walks through the cellar and complains about how cold it is, we're going to go and see it. I know Brett had us the other day close the door in there because they were getting chilly up in the offices. But it is quite cold in here. You know, we've got about 30,000 gallons, or I should say our entire... Uh, 2019 California Chardonnay um, in tank right now, cold stabilizing. And so, yes, winemaking at ZD has not uh, been put on pause okay. with our uh, coronavirus. Uh, we are plugging away. We basically have our bottling coming up in June, and so we've been pretty busy. So we spent the past two weeks putting together the blend, um, and timing was perfect to also get the wine cold stable. And so what we're doing in these tanks is basically we were going to have the blend in tank already, and so it's a really kind of opportune time to take care of one other thing that we don't necessarily worry about, but it's a little bit of a concern, and that is cold stability in white wine. Mm -hmm. And essentially- Why should they care about that? It's mostly because of potential visual defects. So okay. people, you know, they buy their ZD Chardonnay, they throw it in their fridge, they leave it for two months, which we know, of course, never happens, or three months. Um, but as it sits in the fridge cold, there's a potential if the wine is unstable that it'll start to crystallize some potassium bitartrate. Okay. Um, not a big deal, doesn't change how your wine tastes, not really a quality thing, but it's kind of a defect. You know, you get a little bit of these crystals in the bottom. I mean, in the old days, people thought it maybe was a bit of glass in there. Yeah. And it's just a way for us to not have any, any issues with it. So is it, there anything that you do in the cold stabilization process that would make it unique? onto ZD in terms of zero defects and how we're able to try to continue to kind of adhere to that standard? Um, no, I mean, the process itself is pretty simple. I mean, mm -hmm. it's actually, in a way, it's become a little bit old school. I mean, nowadays there's a lot of like newer technology that we've actually looked at okay. that can do the cold stabilizing process without chilling the wine down. Cool. Um, we didn't really like the, those processes. We did a couple of trials. The results were not very good. It was expensive. Um, you know, the issue for us mostly was the use of energy, but be because now we're on 100% you know, solar, mm -hmm. that issue is, is a little bit less. And so this is mostly pretty quick. It takes about, you know, anywhere from a week to 10 days. Uh, we help it along a little bit because once we get the wine down to about refrigerator temperature, we'll actually go ahead and seed it with some of the potassium bitartrate yeah. in tank, and mm -hmm. that will actually help the unstable crystals glom onto that stuff and then you know it, kind of, it speeds it up there's times we do it where the day after we seed it the wine is ready and there's times like this year which turned out to be somewhat of a unstable year for uh by tartrate it's actually taken a little bit longer in fact we probably won't get to putting this back to barrel till early next week at the way it's the way it's looking awesome thanks chris yep. guys sure. thanks tuning for in we'll uh see you all next week all right cheers